Hi, I'm Michael, and thank you for watching Aquarium Tech today. Um, first off, I'd like to go ahead and apologize. I've been trying to get videos out. Um, it's been really busy with stuff here, um, trying to figure out, one, uh, if I want to get a new camera or not. So, <laughs> uh, you know, if I decide to get a new camera, the picture quality will get, you know, better and stuff. So, give me that support. <laughs> um, uh, also, been trying to figure out how to edit uh, the videos and stuff like that, trying to use the uh, movie makers and stuff. Not too good at that, um, but uh, I'm starting to figure it out. Um, so I apologize on that end. Um, anyways, I was going to go ahead and do a video on uh, the lighting parameter known as color temperature in Kelvin, Kelvin color temperature. Um, it's probably one of the most important things you personally look at when buying a bulb uh, for, for your light. I mean, it's probably, it's it's like the main thing most people look at when they go for the bulb, you know, you know go to buy a bulb. Now, it's not the only thing to look for, but it is one of the most important. But anyways, we'll go ahead and start off with Kelvin is. Kelvin is actually a measurement of heat, uh, movement of molecules. Uh, basically, uh, for instance, water, um, when it's heated up, it turns into a gas known as steam and of course the molecules are moving around really fast and it's spreading out and that's what steam does now on the other hand when you cool it down it turns into a solid or ice and all the molecules are not moving at all and they are pinched really close together and uh, there are a few points on Kelvin like zero Kelvin is negative 273 degrees or two, negative 273.15 degrees Celsius Celsius is actually directly related to Kelvin, um, but yeah, it's negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, and that is absolute zero, where all, in theory, all molecule movement uh, should cease to exist. Um, anyways, we are mainly going to be looking at light Kelvins, a, slight, a little bit different, but same kind of concept. Um, it's kind of used to show what kind of energy is put out by the bulb and, you know, generally what color the bulb will be. Um, and they, they use this special, uh, I guess the, the term coined for it is black body radiator, I believe. Um, and they basically, you know, they'll put the light in there and, you know, measure all the parameters of the lighting, you know, such as polar, um, color temperature, stuff like that. Um, J j just some common things, you know, that, that maybe you, you come in contact with on a daily basis that might help you understand how, what this is. Um, for instance, like, uh, I believe the standard incandescent bulb is around two and a half, uh, 2,500 Kelvin to 3,000 Kelvin. And that's, you know, what you'd have in your lamp, ceiling fans, old one that has the filament in it, and it might have it on your basic aquarium kit. Um, then something like uh, sunlight is usually around 6,500 Kelvin. Um, and then something like, a, you know, the fluorescent lights in like office buildings and, and uh, Walmart or places like that is usually going to have a uh, color temperature around 3,000 to 3,500 Kelvin. And of course, those are fluorescent bulbs. Um, but basically, uh, I'll go ahead and get into now, basically what, what, which ones are going to be important for your aquarium, okay? Um, now, of course, plants and corals, they're all under the same sun, okay? And like I said, our sun's around 6,500K. And with freshwater plants, especially, you know, shallower tanks, and that's true even for saltwater, um, 6,000, the 6,500K, or what I like how Core Life does, the 6,700K bulbs, uh, those are going to be your best bulbs for fresh water. Um, now, I don't want to, now, now I don't want to tell you, like, for instance, if you get, because there's so many of them out there, like, for instance, a dual, uh, T5 high output fixture, you know, those are pretty common, uh, don't go get two 6,500K or 667Ks because it's you, you want to try to spread the spectrum as out much out as you can. You know you want to try to have like a 6,700 and a 10,000K. Right, all right. Um, 
and of course, you know, 10,000k, um, you know, before I even go any further with this, let me explain kind of why the color, why the color temperature, mat, you know, there's a difference between fresh water and salt water. First off, uh, the higher the color temperature, um, the better it is at penetrating water. So, and especially even more so with salt water, especially because, you know, the water's denser and whatnot. And generally, now this is a general statement, this isn't always true, but generally people's saltwater tanks are much bigger than freshwater tanks. So, that being said, it's a lot more for the light to penetrate, and that's why people use the more bluish lights usually to penetrate that salt water, because that's what happens when the color temperature goes up, and that's what I'm getting to right now. And then there's 10,000 Kelvin, which is usually next. That's the usually the next kind of, there, there can be some in between. Like I know they have 8,000 uh, Kelvin bulbs, like this one. You'll find them in like your standard Aquion hoods and tanks and stuff like that, which is what this is. Actually, I think this one's a marine land, but either way, the point being said, that's usually what comes in your standard hoods. It's an 8,000K T8 or T12, and that looks like this. It's like a pinkish, whitish. Um, anyways, moving on to 10,000K. 10,000K for fluorescent bulbs is usually like a whitish. Uh, it's going to be a whitish, maybe a little hint of blue in there. But that's what that's going to look like, and that's going to be a little bit better for penetrating water. And, that, and that's a really good combination for growing plants or, you know, pretty shallow corals. All right. And then usually another pretty popular one is like the 14K or 12K ones. Or, I'm sorry, 12,000K or 14,000K ones. Um, you know, those are, you know, a little bit higher. You know, they can penetrate a little bit deeper water, but still, pretty, you know, in that good par zone, you know, around the 6,500K. Um, and they still kind of, you know, they still kind of give off some pretty useful light. And of course, there's a few different spikes on the PAR scale, not just the 6500K, you know, that comes from sunlight. There's actually a few spikes on it. Um, and then after that, you usually get 20K, and of course, that's a little bit bluer than the next ones. Um, of course, that's for even deeper tanks and certain corals and stuff like that. Um... Then you got your 50,000K, and those are generally your actinic bulbs. Um, you know, the blues, may, they might have a little bit of purple in them. Uh, those, those are going to be your actinic ones, and those are for really deep tanks. Or there's just for, you know, making a nice addition, you know, to your aquarium, you know, making, the, making it look pretty cool. It gives it that nice tint. I like to use it in some of my aquariums. It's, it's pretty nice. Um... Now, uh, hold on, I'm sorry. Stop. Okay, anyways, um, the, the, the attenic bulbs, even though, like, they, you know, that might seem way out of the range, it, it's fine to use. They're still useful energy. Like, I'll get, when I get to doing the PAR video, there's a few spikes on the PAR scale instead of just the 6500 that comes from the sun. But anyways, also, just something to note, I, I mean, I don't even really need to tell you this, but um, the higher the Kelvin, the more energy the bulb technically puts out. Now, don't let that uh, influence, I, w I really don't even let that influence my decisions at all when buying bulbs. There's so many more important factors like the PAR, um, you know, the depth of the tank or spectrum and stuff like that influence my decisions from going t to that. I mean, it's, it's not as much as, you, you know, you really need to worry about. All right, um, you know, it's just something to know. And another thing, when you can't, uh, you can't really compare different types of bulbs with different kinds of color temperatures and stuff. Um, it doesn't really, you know, you know, work that way. Like I'll give you an example. Um, like you can't really compare like a T12 bulb color temperature to a metal halide. Not just the fact that the metal halide is going to be light years brighter. Um, that it's a completely different kind of bulb. I mean, the, t the T12 is going to be, you know, an old fluorescent, and a metal halide uses a completely different, you know, ignition system and stuff like that, so it's going to put out a slight, slightly different light. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. Um, but, uh, it's, it's just, you, you can't... You, you really can't go on that. You, 
but you can kind of compare, like, for instance, other fluorescent lights to other fluorescent right, lights to each other. Like, you can compare T8, T12, I mean, they fit into the same sockets. Uh, you can usually compare them to even T5s, too. Uh, same kind of thing, or even power compacts, or even the uh, show bulbs, or the SHOs, or the, uh, and even the H show in, like, T5s, and, uh, what's the other one I was thinking of? And, like, the self-ballasting, you know, they're pretty comparable. Um, but uh, I'll get, guess I'll go ahead and I'll show you, start showing you some examples here of Kelvin, and I'll show you the other thing I was just talking about. All right. Now I'm not going to get super thorough into this video about it. Um, you'll start to see the bigger picture of lighting. You know, as I make these videos, you know, this might not seem like it's too detailed, but you know, I'll get into color temperature as I do other lighting parameter videos. It's kind of one big picture, and you'll you'll eventually see what I'm talking about, okay? Now, anyways, this first bulb I'm going to turn on is a 6700K bulb. These are high output T5 bulbs, and this is just for example purposes, just to show you what I'm talking about. This is a 6700K bulb, and this is generally the one you would use for shallow, re, uh, you know, corals and stuff, or, uh, you know, like a freshwater plant to take. See, it's white with like a yellowish tint to it, right? Yeah, kind of white with a little bit of a yellow to it. Now, this one's a 10K bulb, as you can tell. It's pretty much straight white with maybe a tad, tad hint of blue in it. This one's also pretty good for growing freshwater plants and even better for saltwater tanks. Give your tank a nice white look. And I'll go ahead and show you the Atenic here. Now remember, the Atenic, we, we're jumping from 10,000K here to an Atenic. All right. And remember, Atenics are usually around 50,000K. I mean, they can be like 40,000 or even 4,200 or something like that. Or I mean, 40, I'm sorry, 40,000, 42,000, but... You know, it, it varies a little bit, but they're generally around 50. 